Thanks for joining us. I see some new names here this time, so that's really good. I'm gonna, um, let's see, I'm gonna put it in the chat as people roll in, but we have recorded all of these mixers. So if you find this valuable and you wanna go check out some of the old mixers, just go to this link. I think it's in order of um, uh, recency or something. All right, so uh, I believe you all can see my screen. Trisha, you're here, right? You're gonna be letting people in because everybody's rolling in a little late today, which is fine. Okay, thank you very much. All right, I'm gonna get the show on the road. Thank you everybody for joining. This is like my favorite thing to do, by the way. So I hope it becomes your favorite too. Uh, let's hit presentation. Bear with me just a second. Just bear with me. I'm just moving so many things around. I should have done this before. Whoops. There. There we go. All right. Okay. So... Today, um, I got to do a little bit of, it's too many screens here also, yikes. Okay, finally. All right, apologies everybody for all that. Um, all right, so let's do the introduction of the Mastermind Mixers. I have too many screens, it's driving me crazy, it's not your fault. Um, today we're going to be talking about the, the vital question, I sound like Shakespeare, it's like to meet or not to meet a prospective donor? Like, do we really want to meet everybody just because they want to meet or just because our boss tells us we should get out of the office? This is the big question, right? So let's do some housekeeping first. Remember that if you're taking the course, because this is um, uh, this Mastermind Mixers is available to customers of Market Smart and people who are taking the course uh, with Dr. James. So if you're taking the course, remember, uh, or if you're a customer, anybody in your organization can attend these events. I, I, I hope you'll invite your administrators, leaders, board members, if you find value in this and you want them to engage in this way. So it's open to them. May as well uh, let them let them learn. Uh, feel free to share that meeting link when you get it. Every time you get an email inviting you, you can share it to anybody you want, even board members. And at the very end, there will be a survey. Um, it's very helpful to us if you let us know how you're benefiting or not benefiting and what else we could do to make this better. I know it's free, but we still want to make it awesome as if you're paying a lot of money for it. Um, the... Oh, and there's always a reminder that if you're taking the e-course, that is an annual subscription. So if you finish it, uh, well, remember that the course itself is you can give it to anybody in your organization. It's one price. If you have 100 people in your organization, they can all get the course, but it is an annual subscription. So if you decide that everybody's seen it already or nobody wants to, then just you've got to let us know and we'll kill the, the subscription. All right. Um, oh, and yes, referrals. If you're a customer and you're happy, or even if you just think that what we have to say is pretty cool and you want to share it with people, we love referrals. It's mostly how we grow our business, much like maybe you and many other businesses. So please think about that and share referrals with us, or you could just send them online to our website. All right. So without further ado, let's talk about to meet or not to meet today. And we're gonna have an exercise at the end of this mini presentation where we're gonna um, we're gonna work on something which I'll get to in a little bit. But um, before we get into, into that exercise, I hope we can uh, have some, some of you engage if you don't mind, if you're not shy, is I'm curious about how you do it uh, so there are some fundraisers that we've met with uh, and that are friends of ours that really 
are almost traditionalists, I would call it, is that they're they're like when they get a prospect identified or if they're using our system and it's not just identified, the person's not just identified by prospect research, but they have qualify, qualifying characteristics, meaning they're using our qualitative data that comes straight from the donor for qualification and prioritization, or I should say pre-qualifying them for outreach. Um, either way, when you reach out to them, do you ask for a meeting right away? I know some people that, many people that do that, and there's even a, a consultant who's a friend of mine, and we actually sponsor his podcast, who that's his thing, is like, get the meeting, get the meeting, get the meeting, you know? Um, and the um, administrators really love that, you know, they want visits, it seems, and activity. But then there's others that I know and that have read my book, and we talk about building rapport and building trust first before running out there to go meet with people. And then there's a third level, which is uh, where you introduce clarity by way of something I call an invitation, which is, uh, I'll talk about in a little bit, but we've done a whole mastermind mixer on it and talked about how to, how to introduce clarity into the conversation so that you're not just running out the door to meet where nobody understands why you're meeting, uh, and it's kind of a schmooze fest. There's somewhere like between a schmooze fest and a very deliberate and intentional meeting. Uh, and and we want to find the balance of what's right because you can't, uh, I mean, if you do what administrators want and just go meet, 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 you may be very busy, but you might not generate a lot of gifts. So um, before I before I get into, and you now you saw my flash, I said, what's the cost of a meeting? Ah, I shouldn't have shown you that. But what do you all do? Like, what, what do you find is the way you do it? Do you just, are you one of those that will just meet with people, you know, and that's how you build rapport and build trust and clarity? Or do you start um, with building rapport and then you move to a meeting later who's brave i see lori is always brave but i won't call you out <laughs> hey greg uh, i'll i'll jump in here uh sorry thank if i interrupted you, Jason. someone thank you yeah uh, I work for Boys and Girls Clubs of Chicago, so a natural way, if, if there's like a, if it's a cold contact, I haven't really had much of a, of a warm introduction to them any, at any point, but a, a nice low hanging thing to offer them as a tour of our club if they want to come see our mission in action. So that way, it's not, hey, come meet with me. It's, hey, come see our kids, come meet our staff. It really, uh, it's that connecting tissue that really uh, brings the donor. It, it's the incentivizing piece to bring the donor in. But I, I, I see nowadays, especially with the pandemic, it's it's tough to get board members or even I work with corporate partners and foundation partners to have them want to come in and stepping foot into the facility is a win, is a big win these days to have them come in because everybody's busy, has their lives and with, with Zoom and virtual uh, virtually connecting is kind of the way people pr prefer to go. Um, so if, if they're not willing to come in or able to come in in person, Try to schedule a virtual visit in some capacity if if they're not able to come in and see the mission in action. Try to bring the mission to them uh, that's convenient for them on their on their timeline. I see some heads bobbing and nodding, so I'm wondering what's resonating about that with others. Well, I I mean I think connecting with the mission through tours and visits is really important. Um, I am new to my role and I've been doing a lot of meetings, but only with people who have met in the past with other uh, major gift officers and um, planned giving officers. So I'm really continuing a relationship in those early meetings. Um, the others I'm trying to connect with and bring them in like Jason said for tours and things like that. Yeah, and by the way, when when y'all engage, if you don't mind, just real quick, give us your name and where you work. Jason, I thank you for doing it that way. It just helps. And sorry, Lori Ann Williams. I'm with Catholic Charities Twin Cities. Oh, good. Thank you. It's good to have you here. Yes. 
All right, good. Um, yeah, any other thoughts? Because I saw some people looking like they wanted to talk. I want to make sure to help spur that along. Yeah, I'll jump in. I'm, I was real excited to hear about this topic today um, because food for the poor is in a little different um, situation in that our, all our uh, work is actually international, you know, mm -hmm. extreme poverty kind of thing. So we do, of course, offer donors to go and see our work, you know, in Honduras and things like that. But there's a very small percentage that either have the time or capacity to travel. So um, the organization did make the investment of sending all the frontline fundraisers to Honduras earlier this year. So I made sure to volunteer to do the social media pieces. So that became my virtual tour. I'm going to have to rethink that, of course, because that'll age and it, it needs to expand. But I, I love what Jason said about just, call, you know, starting with that building rapport and connecting with the mission first uh, right out the chute. Because with for those of us, unless when I was with higher education, it was quite different when I worked for university uh, because they already have an established rapport, whether, you know, they either love you or didn't love you, you know, depending on their experience as a student and professors and things like that. But when you're a lot of us like Boys and Girls Club and Food for the Poor and other organizations, it has to be built from the ground up, you know. So this is interesting. You're talking this concept of virtual tours seems really powerful. Like, does anybody feel like they become an expert at that and really crack the code on it? I would love to hear that <laughs> if you know. Right. Okay. Yeah, because it's um, it's interesting. People want to see impact, but the key is resonance. So if the impact that you're showing and it is a nice to have, but doesn't quite resonate with the specific program that they're interested in, you might you might not you might gain dissonance. It's, it's uh but but the idea of doing a virtual tour because people are uh not as likely to want to come to you this way you can come to them at their convenience it's uh and convenience is a very powerful influencer so okay this is great anybody else before i i kind of move on Greg, right. I did. I did want to chime in. I, I don't want to derail the topic, but just it's it's a side effect of this topic is um, to meet or not to meet, and I want to meet with them, but they don't want to meet with me. They want to meet with the program team. They want to meet. They they don't want to talk to me. And I was caught by. I I got to find it's one of the posts you had is the important role a fundraiser plays and why a donor would want to have a relationship with a fundraiser. And I got to dive back into that because I'm running into that a little bit too on my end um, with the meet or not to meet, but I just wanted to- That's the that. activity we're going to work on. So um, you're in luck. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good. All right. Let's, let's noodle this a little bit more, right? So in, as a business owner, right? So I'm ultimately responsible. And, and by the way, so in case anybody didn't know, like I'm one of the few owners of these companies that help the charitable sector that is not owned by a private equity, uh, private equity investor, or a public company, right? So, and and it's funny because I'm looking at my staff and their faces; they know this. Like every penny matters to me personally and generally i overdo it and i overinvest in the company and get myself into trouble sometimes but that's okay um because this is my life mission and my passion but what that means is that we're very very uh cogn cognizant of the cost of a meeting so much though that, that like we have one of our salespeople here jeff Giannato, if any of you ever talked to him you probably have not met him in person has anybody here been been sold by Jeff? Anybody got? Yeah, really? Oh, yay. Been sold, right? He's not a, a, that kind of sales guy. You know, he doesn't sell you. He helps you decide. But um, uh, but the cost now me and Jeff, we went down to go see Rails to Trails Conservancy in D.C. Uh, yesterday. Jeff came from Philly. Uh, I'm just outside of DC, right outside the border. And we went down there. I, I went, I personally was like, oh, you, we got that meeting. Let's go. I want to meet them because I'm a big trail guy. So I have their app and I go find wherever I'm, I'm always using their app and I love the trails. It's like my, every day I'm on a trail. 
uh, it's usually the same one, Capitol Crescent Trail here in DC, goes all the way to DC pretty much from my house. Anyway, I wanted to go see them, but before this meeting, I was thinking, oh, I don't have any idea what the cost of that meeting was. Like we had to get Jeff a tra train ticket, he had to come down, he had to stay over, overnight. Uh, and then there's me and what is my hourly rate? Who the heck knows? I mean, you know, it's very complicated to determine what is it really cost your organization to meet. Um, but then there's a more of a tortoise versus hare approach. Whoops, this was just the agenda. Okay, so, um, so yeah, there's these costs involved in meeting and these costs are really your donors' dollars that we're expending to meet with new prospective donors or current donors to help them understand the value you can provide to them in being a VIP conduit and connector and facilitator for more giving. Uh, so how do you figure out the costs? And meanwhile, then there's um, fundraisers I've talked to and even recently who have administration saying like, get out of the office, go meet with donors. I don't wanna see you here. Uh, uh, how many meetings did you schedule? How many meetings did you go on? What what are the quantity of interactions? Because, and 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 sadly, and I, I'm gonna, here, I'll really go off course. And, and when I wrote my first book almost 10 years ago, I sent it out to what I thought were the top thought leaders at the time. It's funny because many of them I don't talk to anymore. I found out, like I figured out that these people don't actually know what the hell they're talking about. And it really drove me nuts because they're so loud and so authoritarian. Uh, and and they're and some of them like own software companies and they're always doing webinars and, and on how to do stuff and I'm like and then I finally meet with them it took a long time and I'm like these people don't know anything anything but they're repeating what everybody always says or if you Google how to do it and then their their company now I'm really getting hot their companies are always putting out content telling you all how to do stuff that's really just rehashed content. Like they'll hire some, some kid to write a blog post or a, or a whole report and nobody's done any, nobody knows anything. They're just Googling to find out what the other idiots have said works that doesn't really work. And they're repackaging it and shoving it at you. It drives me crazy. All right, where was I? Anyone want to bring me back? Oh, I was talking about the cost of a meeting, right? <laughs> <laughs> and the administration not knowing that, but they're kind of driving you out there to go do these activities. And this is the thing is when I wrote the book like 10 years ago, I sent this out, sent it out to one of these amazing thought leaders. And, and he wrote back to me telling me that this book should not be published. It sh it's not ready for prime time. Uh, and uh, And that I didn't know anything. And, and I'm like, well, I'm the guy who's been given like 10 grand to a certain organization every year. I think I have a sense of, of an idea of what it's like to be on, at least on this side, uh, as a donor. So uh, that was really frustrating to me. But then the end of the story is a couple of weeks ago, I went, he had a, a webinar and he sent me an email, you know, and joined our webinar. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to go see what does this guy really know? And he's talking, he's a consultant, he's talking about, oh, you got to have all the activity and you got to make sure people are doing their activities and they're getting out of the office and they got to count their activities. And if you count their activities, this many activities is going to create this many gifts. I'm sorry to do his voice like that. I don't, it's not really the way he talks, but, and I can't see any of you, right? So I don't know if this is resonating or people are leaving right now. Is Can I see some head nod, nods or is this, <laughs> what, what did I just, I, I don't believe activity creates revenue is what I'm trying to say. All right, good. Chelsea's giving me the thumbs up. Thank you. All right. This stuff drives me crazy because in my company, I don't, we, we don't look at, at, we do count the activity, but what we look for is conversion rates. What's more important is not activities, but how many people are advancing from one step of, of the process for either selling or in your case, fundraising, uh, 
how many people are advancing from one? Because if you're having all these meetings, but people aren't moving themselves forward and into your caseload, which is another pet peeve of mine, I think people should decide, they should decide if they're going to be in your caseload, not you or some administrator. Anyway, getting off topic. So um, well, I guess it's safe to say this drives me nuts. I don't think it's fair for fundraisers. I don't think, and I think it's oppressive and almost authoritarian, borderline dictatorial. <clears throat> there, I said it. So <laughs> before we get <laughs> any hotter, do you think activity produces outcomes? I guess it's going to be hard for you to tell me no uh, right now, but what do you think of my passion there? And yeah. Well, I will jump in because I fully agree with that. I mean, I had I just had a call. I mean, well, a call into our main line this morning that demonstrates this. So there's a donor been working with for over a year. You know, we're starting out with her IRA gifts and, you know, because I'm in the legacy side of things and I've never met her in person. But, you know, we are a faith based organization. So when I found out, you know, she requested prayer for something going on in her family life. I prayed, followed up with her. We engage, you know, now she called into the organization wanting to do a $4,900 gift, which is a pretty good gift for us because uh, she saw an email, a, a challenge thing that we have going on for a, for a house. And she didn't want to, she said, I want to talk to Elizabeth. Can you please have Elizabeth call me today because I want to talk to her. And that just made my heart sing. I've not met with her, but what I would like to see us go towards is meaningful connections, like defining whatever we do have to connect with donors, but why don't we call it something neutral? So if it's virtual, like Catherine put in the chat at University of Boston, more people are comfortable with Zoom, whether, you know, whatever it is, as long as it's advancing the relationship, can we redefine in-person meetings to be a meaningful connection and measure that way? Because here she is, she's stepping up and doing a $4,900 gift. That's, that's the result, right? And she's happy and engaged. So anyway, I Elizabeth fully support what you're saying. Yeah, I'm going to want to send you one of the older mastermind mixers then because we talked about uh what the 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 steps, the advancement steps I developed and the way instead of calling it a min meaningful engagement from your perspective, I recommend that we we do it from the donor's perspective. Oh, there you go. Even better. Yeah, I'd love yeah. to see that. That that's that's the way we measure true advancement not by you believe you had a meaningful engagement, but they did and they said so. And and so then then you can, anyway, I don't wanna get us off track. Um, so thank you. Okay, at least one person that resonated and you all haven't left the, the, the meeting. So I think you're with me. Anyone else before I move on? All right, so let's think about what's the cost of a meeting, right? So at Market Smart, we try to figure this out, but it gets pretty, pretty, it, it's pretty hard. So I thought, all right, let's do what I do pretty much all day long now. And you mostly are probably not like me, but I'm on chat GPT all day. I never use Google really anymore. Um, I'm just a chat GPT guy at this point with, with my app and on my computer. So I asked chat GPT because it seems to know everything. Uh, what's the cost for a nonprofit fundraiser? And it begins by saying that it's hard to say exactly. It depends on a lot of factors, okay? But then it, it, it very conveniently in a fraction of a second gives me a whole list of what those potential cost components are. And I, you don't even have to read it, but you, you know, like we, you were just talking about them, like, you know, travel or, or I was, meeting venue, things like that, right? So there's clearly a cost to running out and meeting with people. So that begs the question is like, okay, do you meet or do you not meet? Meaning, do you are you going to be a rabbit who jumps out to fulfill the administrator's authoritarian, authoritarian needs for seeing that they've got you busy? Or do you want to be a tortoise who's engaging with people at their convenience when the timing is right for them. And it's more of a donor centric, like, is this good for them? Not is this good to fill my activity quotas to make my boss feel good? 
Um, what I found, well, I'll, I'll just put it, let's, let's do the thought process this way. Um, whoops, is let's break down, let's cascade this. So you can make outreach to someone and um, you might not reach them, which is the most likely outcome. So then you can decide either to leave a message or to not leave a message. Okay. Now, let's suppose you do reach them or they call you back, then you can go into bunny rabbit mode and you can ask for the meeting right away. And this is what my friend, and, and I love him, <laughs> I sponsor his podcast. I'm glad he teaches people how to get out and, and land meetings. But do you really always want that meeting? But anyway, the way he recommends it is just ask for the meeting. Just ask for it. And he's got a script and it works. You will land meetings with that script. It's just very clear as, as you just call, hey, uh, Ms. Williams, I'm going to be in your area. I'd like to meet with you. How is 10, 10 a.m. on Tuesday? Very clear, very concise. It works. I mean, they either say yes or they say no. What do you do when they say no? Ah, there's not that much training on that. Don't worry about that. Just, just call and ask. I'm not much of a ask, ask, ask kind of guy, you know? So, and by the way, <laughs> if you were in yet last month's Mastermind Mixer, we talked about this um, and I showed you a request for meeting that came from a fundraiser at Cornell and was sent to one of my good friends who's a fellow, he's a CEO and we belong to a club of CEOs. So he sent me the, her request for a meeting and he said, and I said, so did you meet? And he said, no. And he basically explained, yeah, because I felt like I know they're just going to ask me for money. So why don't I just shortcut the decision and be like, no, I'm not going to go. So I put a little kit in there. I hope that, but that's what's in his mind. And I, I say, so why, why do you feel that way? Well, he's like, because that's the way it always is not shouldn't be that way but it is all right so maybe there's a different way is instead of asking for the meeting right away what if we have a little building of trust and then ask for the meeting and they'll either say yes or no but there's more so there's more um another way to do it is to build rapport and trust and offer some sort of value. Let's give Jason a big round of applause because Jason must be either really awesome on his own or he's been reading some of my content and or somebody else's and he provides value and offers that are likely to resonate that are not about meeting with him, but about gaining value in some other way. It's not about him, it's about them. So he offered a tour or a virtual tour. And then at some point he might ask for the meeting, maybe on that call, but probably not. But they're gonna either agree and say yes and agree to meet or they'll say no. But you could also go another way where you just ask them, uh, you try to gain permission to follow up sometime in the future. Like in other words, you give them a little bit of value and with no, no request of anything in return. This is how the law of reciprocity works. If you ask or give without asking, it builds more trust, right? They're like, oh, wow, he didn't want anything. He just was inviting me he, to see the tour. That's, that's great. He didn't ask me for money too. That's pretty cool. He didn't pounce on me like that kitten. And they'll say yes and grant you permission to follow up, or they might say no. There's one caveat with this is oftentimes people will say yes, and they'll grant you permission to follow up, and then they might ghost you later. But that's their prerogative. You just keep following up, keep giving. It's probably that the timing just isn't right. It's not you. It's not the mission. It's just their timing. They're busy. 
Or here's the most complex way. This is the tortoise is you build rapport and trust. You provide value and, and offers. This is, by the way, I call this engagement calling. And this is partly in the book, but I've written blog posts on this. Uh, plus, you make it abundantly clear who you are and the value you provide. And then you ask for permission to follow up, saving the meeting request for another time in which they'll either grant you permission to follow up. And when you do follow up, you're constantly wanting to be taking their temperature and reminding them of who you are and the value you provide as a conduit and a facilitator so that they can find meaning in life through philanthropy. You know, the, that sentence I just said, facilitator, conduit, VIP provider, value provider, so they can find meaning in their life through giving, right? These words, like you got to get good at them and just kind of say them. To them this is what i do but then you can take knowing that and knowing that that's who you are then at some point they're gonna be ready or they're never gonna be ready but you could take their temperature and ask them for a meeting each time or every other time that you're providing some sort of value and have some kind of engagement um at some point you're almost gonna need to um you're going to need to say, are you in or are you out? Because I've explained to you that I'm a value provider and I'm a conduit and this kind of stuff. And I'm here to provide value to you. And, you know, I'm trying, but it seems to me like you're not all that interested. And I know you would say this softer, but it's like, can you answer this email like A, B, or C? Do you want me to go away and pound sand? <laughs> you know? Or do you want me to keep doing this? Because you're going to eventually someday we're going to want to talk seriously. Or, you know, what's the deal here? It's kind of like, give, can you respond? Just let me know. If they don't even respond to that, then it's over. They disqualified themselves. Don't bother them. Don't, you know, don't, don't bother yourself with it. So before I move on, and I want to make sure I'm keeping up with this. Any thoughts on this? What do you see? I, I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you, Robin. Okay, good. This doesn't always work. My little air traffic controller thing. Um, I like the idea that there's many paths to the same thing because I everybody is different. You're never going to have a cookie cutter donor. Everybody is going to have a different path that they want to follow. And you have to use your intuition and know which one of these versions is going to work for them. That's all. That's good. Have you, has anyone ever outlined this before for their, like, have you ever sat down and been like, okay, yeah, this is the way it seems to work. Like does, cause I'm, I don't do your job. I know our, our team and I, I can imagine, is this, is this how it kind of works or how you think it should work? I think that it's a long game, um, which is sort of what you're, I mean, some people are ready, the timing, it, things can happen quickly, and some people, it's a long game. I, I think the the challenge is um, sometimes trying to read, you, you do these steps, and you can't conclusively know, um, but but, you know, you've got to try and get a read from people. Uh, and I think the advantage when you're offering things of value is it provides an opportunity for interaction. So you can really get a sense, is this something that they really care about? Or, you know, they give because it's obligatory. Mm. Yeah, or almost habitual. Right, right. Right, because yeah. we were. Just, I was just having a discussion with someone about this yesterday. Because I'm sure everybody in this um, session, there are not, there are charities, maybe your alma mater that you support. It's more obligatory. It's not 
because you're really, really just, I mean, some people are, but lots of, lots of us have things we support because we feel we should as an obligation, but it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean it's our true passion. So um, you need to kind of figure that out with each person. Um, and I think the, I think these things allow you to have a dialogue to determine where we are in their philanthropic priorities. You might not be able to do that in your very first visit, but if you're doing these things right, you should be able to develop a rapport to know. So if the person says, yeah, you know, I like what you do, but my heart is with A, B, or C, mm -hmm. you know, and you don't spend more time. Um, yeah, and if they're engaging with your offers, then you know they have interest because you're providing them offers that will help them get connected more deeply in ways that resonate for them. If they don't, if they don't take advantage of the offers, it's kind of it's kind of clear, right? All right, so let's move on. Greg, that, can I ask oh, you a question? Greg? Oh yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. Um, is this based on telephone calls? Yes. Okay. This is based mostly on telephone, but also it could be email. I okay. know some people are using text these days. Right. Okay. That's very helpful. Thank you. Yep. Um, yeah, it's funny. I forgot my cat with my, uh, it's not my cat, but all right. So uh, let's talk about Amazon for a minute. Amazon, and it's, I, I realize they're a product company, if you will, and I, if you even want to call them that. Yeah, they're a product company. You know, they own like Whole Foods and things. Uh, they make, they make uh, products now and such. When they, we actually have a former employee that works over there. Um, when they develop product, the way they do it is they start by creating a list of frequently asked questions that a consumer would think to ask about the product. And they, they use that process of thinking about that individual's or, or persona's questions in order to develop and refine the product, right? So, um, and then what they do after that is they, they, their aim is to end up with a press release that that describes the product and answers in the press release the frequently asked questions. Okay, So the reason why I bring this up is because um, supporters, high value, high capacity supporters have questions. And there's often a, a, a great lack of transparency and understanding about what what is the purpose of the visit what is the purpose of the request of the visit you know who the heck are you and why would i want to talk to you anyway and you were mentioning oftentimes they want to meet with program staff and such so what i'd like to do is in the in in the time that we have left is let's talk about, and it, some of you may have been on um, other episodes of this, where I've talked about what I recommend is that you create an invitation of sorts, and you may not answer all these 10 questions, but, and Tricia, uh, as we get into this exercise, I, I'd like you to take notes if you don't mind, please. Um, there are, are, this is the FAQs, I guess, is what I'm trying to help you think about and develop is like a donor may may wonder, well, who are you? Who, you know, so this this press release should answer that question, who I am. I am uh, a person who's been working here for seven years. You know, I decided to work here because um, uh, the, my mother, uh, it, maybe it's a hospital, right? My mother was taken care of by the people here. I know how good this, ho or like Tim, Tim Andrew, Andrews, he, he went to college and sorry to call you out, Tim, but you know, he went to Benedictine college. So, I mean, I mean, what a great thing to, to start with 
when you let people know who you are before they meet with you. That should be part of your press release and, and FAQs. Uh, what you do for people, when pe when do people usually bring you in to the fold for a more de a deeper discussion? These are all the kinds of, of answers to questions I'd like you to think about in this part of the discussion and, and others. Uh, so I'm going to kind of like open it up now and like, let's see if, if we can see, are there any missing or which, which are maybe, maybe I should say like, which do you think are the top one, two or three that, that a, a, a supporter would want to know before they meet and that maybe you could even have as an attachment to, to your, 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 um, your, your outreach emails and calls or texts. I see some heads nodding here. So I'm wondering is, you know, what are you thinking? Uh, I hope you don't mind. I call on you, Jason. You you seem to be locked in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, at Boys and Girls Clubs of Chicago, we have over 20 clubs across the city and um, we opened up a brand new club, beautiful state-of-the-art facility on the west side of Chicago. So that club's getting a lot of attention. That club's getting a lot of interest. Companies are reaching out to that club director and saying, hey, I see you have a new club on the west side of Chicago. We would love to support. And, you know, he's a new club director, so we're working on coaching him. And I think some, some coaching we can provide to all of our club leaders is um, when people reach out, how to appropriately connect them with, the you know, the development or the advancement team so that um, it's a smooth transition. It's a smooth transition. So it's like coaching to for us to think about this answer, but coaching for with our club staff to think about how they respond to because because they're often the first line of inquiry instead of somebody calling and think, oh, I want to contact the advancement department at, at Boys and Girls Club Chicago. No, they're going to contact the club directly. And so um, the, the company was Amazon. It's funny you mentioned Amazon as an example. And they reached out to the club. And uh, the club director said, uh, I want to loop in someone from my advancement team. And I wasn't on that call. But from what he explained, the the, the contact was like, well, I don't want to talk to, to them. I want to talk. I want to talk to I want to keep it local and with you. I'm, and so I'm working on smoothly massaging that out to figure out um, how can I bring value, how can I present, how I bring, how, how I provide value to that partner, um, because I I wasn't the one who first reached out to them or contacted them. It's kind of I'm coming in as the, as the third wheel now to try to make sure that I'm not trying to do anything nefarious and build that trust uh, with with the donor because because they didn't ask to meet with me. It was the the club director thought oh I should bring in my advancement colleague, which I'm grateful he did. Now I need a figure out how to how to navigate this and this is some good questions to get my script uh ready to go so jason i just want to translate something for you uh, that you've already figured out so maybe it's for the benefit of other people they're not really saying they don't want to meet with a person in advancement what they're saying is i don't want to be asked for money and if they understood what a person from advancement or development whatever the department is really does they would accept your injection you know you being injected it's just they they immediately think it's i'm going to be asked for money so they need to understand that no no no, no that's not what i do uh what i do is i i'm your vip conduit i'm your uh i'm your supporter and helper and decision making processor i'm not going to ask you for money i'm going to help you think about whether you want to move forward and advance towards thinking about money <laughs> and giving uh yeah so it's it is fascinating and the only way that's why i'm i'm encouraging you to think about these faqs and this press release and to nail it down into a one sheeter so that people understand that that you there's a process there's a, uh, we're not going to pounce because that's what they're expecting. Unfortunately, because like that consultant who told me my book stunk, you know, that's what he's teaching everybody to do. And that's what Google says you should do. And that's what all the software providers that are creating content are telling you to do. They drive me nuts, clearly. Has anyone created any such kind of like, hey, here's here's what how I help kind of one sheeter. No, because I'm going to encourage you all to try it. And here's the best way to do it, in fact, is to develop it with 
a donor. So you can use that as an opportunity to meet with one of your best donors who you haven't gotten to reconnect with, or even a pros prospective donor is say, I don't want to meet to talk to you about money, but I've got this idea that I learned from this crazy guy named Greg Warner, who said that we should use this process that Amazon uses in FAQs and press releases. And I wanted to sh show you what I've come up with and see if you felt that this one sheeter would resonate with people like you, but it's not really for you. You could do that virtually in a Zoom call. Lori, go ahead. I was waiting for you. I knew you'd come out. No, no. <laughs> um, can you hear me? Because I yeah. don't have my mic now. Um, I like this, uh, this script, um, especially the first part of it. And I have done and have seen somebody, you know, making a little card that says the first few items on there. Um, it seems like... Um, too far to go into all the, the later points. Have you seen someone do this in their invitation or one pager? No, it's just an idea so far. Yeah. It's an idea that I'm, I've been encouraging people to try. Of course, I can't try it because I'm not a fundraiser. <laughs> However, when our team reaches out to people, they're instructed to tell people like, because we invite people to, to do a demo and to meet with people like Jeff. Uh, is we say, look, we're never going to ask you to buy in this. It's going to be totally exploratory. You can leave at any time and um, you'll gain a lot of value. You'll gain a lot of information and learn something that you never learned before. So we have kind of those bullet points. I don't know if any of my, my outreach team are on the call or if Jeff even remembers what those are that we've been, but yeah, we do try and lay out that we're not, here to sell you. Right. We're here to educate and inform and help you navigate the decision-making process. So I think we kind of do it, but I haven't seen a fundraiser yet. And since I, I want to include this in my next book, <laughs> I really won't unless anybody ever does it. <laughs> I don't want to recommend things that nobody's ever going to do. Yeah, I would say that um, other people probably do the same. I, in an introduction, introductory phone call or letter, will often touch on some of the early questions, but not not go through all of no, not go through all of the questions. But but I I try to do an abbreviated version of it so people know what my job is at the outset and that it's not just about, it's not friend raising, I guess. That's a good way to say it. Okay. So I'm going to jump out and wrap this up with just one more share. It's in a different document. So bear with me. I'm going to get it from my PowerPoint, which is on like the third screen. Um, all right. So I, I developed something that design it's a design that explains the the navigation process for the donor uh, bear with me i'm going to make this bigger all right and let me make it bigger for you oh remove this okay so this might be an accompaniment or something that uh is separate uh, I mean, is included in that is, and I'll walk you through it real quick and let me know if this resonates or not, is that this explains like, look, we're not going to ask you for money right away. First, we're going to get to know you better and especially understand why you care. Later, if it's right for you, we'll offer you an invitation so that you can benefit from me as your conduit. And if you accept uh, that invitation, then we'll we'll work together on uh, a roadmap for you to get more deeply involved so that you understand and can gain alignment with what you might support and the reasons why you might support it and how you might support it, like what kind of funding 
you what 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 assets you might use. So we'll we'll develop if you accept my invitation, I'll go to work for you and start to create a roadmap, which might include tours, which might include meeting program staff, um, uh, you know, watching videos, uh, you know, whatever that means to help you get uh to explore and understand better how how your money would be used uh for good. And then if that works. And, and that makes sense. Then I'm going to develop a proposal for you and you're going to get a chance to review it and we're going to refine it. And you're going to have me go back and forth and we're going to dot the I's and cross the T's. And when it's right for you, you'll finalize your commitment by transferring the assets, the funds uh, at a time that's right for you. And when your advisors or your family feels it's the right thing to do. And uh, and then it doesn't end because I'm going to make sure that you feel that it was worthwhile. We call this stewardship, but um, I'm saying it in their words is, was it worthwhile? And if it was, then I'll, I'll, I'll of course, I'm going to gauge your interest in, in seeing if you want to go on a, another, another um, episode, if you will. So having said that, what do you think of that little addition to the v, the uh, the document? And would you and you can of course adjust it. I have one lady at chat, who's not on this call today at Salvation Army who took it and made it linear. Now I don't know why, but she said that it, she that she felt that works better for her. It's, it's up to you. So I saw some heads nodding with the last few minutes that we got. What do you think of that? Would anybody show anything remotely like that to a supporter and walk them through that process? Yeah, I would. For sure. For the right person at the right time. You know, I just look, listen to all this the last hour. It's so it, a lot of the stuff you're recommending, I kind of do without it being quite so formal. Mm. Um, you know, one of my one of my standard things I say to people. When I, it, you know, I think it's the same thing. It's like, you just, you know, you just want to ask me for money. And I'm like, nah, actually, I really don't. Um, and, and I just tell them, look, what my role is in plan giving is we're always going to have a list of priorities, you know, and we do that, that are, you know, next five years, this is what we need to do. We need to do this and this and this and this. And, and I said, and I tell them, I said, we can talk about them, but I, I want to know what your priorities are. And so let's, let's talk about those. And if they match up, fine. But, um, I think something like this and something like the FAQ would blend very nicely with that that type of conversation. So, uh, yeah, I try to put it all back on them and say, you know, what do you want to do? Like, that's kind of the fun part is, you know, I don't really like talking about our new library or because it's boring. Um, but what do you want to do? Uh, so don't repeat that. But um, yeah, so I try to yeah try to put it back on them, and then, like I said, and even in, even some of my introductory emails, I tell people, look, I'd I'd love to meet with you, but I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to ask you for a dime, and uh, and I actually that's I use those exact words, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't, but uh, each case is a little bit different. So it's interesting what you were saying there, Tim. It reminded me that these tools that I'm trying to develop for the sector and for people like you are really frameworks because all of you have different styles, different personalities. Um, I, I don't know if I would expect anyone to actually take anything that I'm creating and, you know, just lay it out in front of people. But at the very least, I think that having these in front of you and, and, thinking about them, reading them, or rewriting them in your own words will get it straight how, how you want to do. Either way, the idea is to provide a level of transparency and, and convey value that you're a value provider, not a solicitor or extractor. And so I hope that's clear that that's, that's the reason I'm doing this is not to have you all do it exactly this way or answer all those questions, but rather to just 
think about it and you're all doing it naturally. So I'm saying, let's just kind of put a little more behind it so that it's intentional and not just natural. So with that and the heads bobbing and some smiles here and there, um, any final thoughts? Like, what did you get out of this today? Anybody going to do anything with this? <laughs> yeah, I'm really going to think about your chart here. Like, you know, Tim mentioned a lot of this we do, but if I can think it through a little more clearly about, we use the term advisor at Food for the Poor, which, which I really like. That's one piece I really like to just be more proactive and offering as an invitation to get to know more about their values and then be your insider advisor to make sure you're having a meaningful experience and then kind of go from there. My number one challenge is getting people to engage because we started off as a direct mail only kind of organization. And to go from that to meaningful engagements has been challenging for a lot of us. Um, so I think this gives a little more structure to that and I'm appreciative of that. Thank you. Yeah, if any of you on this call want a private session with me to help you work on it, just let me know and I will I'll I'll ask you questions. I won't do it for you because it's got to be your personality and style, but I'm happy to do that and uh there's no cost. So just let me know. Can you send yeah. can you share this slide, Greg? Yeah. Absolutely. I'll have uh, Trisha when we send out the recording of this event and uh, she'll she'll do this slide and I'll give you those 10, the 10 points of the invitation from the other one. Um, yeah. Thank you all, by the way, for thinking this through with me. I am clearly looking for guinea pigs. If you want to, you know, as Laura says at Salvation Army, she says she says she's my lab rat. Uh, it sounds terrible that way, but uh, if you could come up with a different term, I'm looking for friends. <laughs> How about that? And I'm happy to help you if you'll want to engage with me because this is my job. This is my job as the CEO and leader is to explore and help you all um, so that we can end up building better products and tools to support what you're doing. So with that, it's top of the hour. We did time it just right to get you all back to work. Uh, thank you. If you have time to take the survey, please do. And if you find referrals uh, that you think would benefit from either this free stuff or even just learning about Market Smart, we'd be eternally grateful. And uh, thank you very much.